Hey, what's up? Lee Ron here. In this video, you're gonna learn how to paint people in watercolor in two steps only. So it's gonna be a two steps method. By the end of it, you'll really understand how to do this kind of a thing. Okay, I stole some of Udes Correa's tricks, um, but I think he'll forgive me and I really like the result. Let's take it to the table and get started. Okay, so let's get started here and I wanna keep this stage fast because I always take way too much time on sketching the people. I just put in the proportions in terms of height. So that's one dude. Uh, and another one, uh, this is a picture I took again in New York uh, in our last vacation. If you recognize yourself, apologies. Uh, but it just, the, the light and shadow conditions were so beautiful and distinct. I really wanted to capture this scene. Now I'm gonna put a lot of emphasis on the painting stage. So not a lot of um, emphasis here on the drawing. Uh, there's The motion is important. So it's kind of like this. That's the leg that's going back. And I'm, I'm just eyeballing. Usually I'll take uh, my time and measure a bit more carefully, but uh, I really don't want this to be a, a major part of the video. But I do want to show you how easy it is sometimes to, to sketch an eyeball. I want to show you that it's possible. I don't want to skip through to the you know finished um, uh, drawing and then take it from there. I want you to see the whole thing. Uh, let me know if that's kind of the kind of thing that bores you and I'll try not to do it as much. I'm really still learning what works, what doesn't, what's interesting, what isn't. Uh, but in any case, yeah, this guy's holding a water bottle and now we're going for the next person. And this is a good opportunity to remind you that uh, if you're having trouble with sketching people and you want a more intuitive and fun kind of approach like what I'm doing now, which is very um, simplistic, but I think it's very rewarding and you can get some accurate results with it as I demonstrate, so check out the book. Uh, my new book is out, it's currently just the Kindle version. Uh, so if you want a paperback, you'll have to wait for an update. Uh, but the How to Sketch People book is out, uh, the Kindle version on Amazon, self-published as always, you know me. Um, and, um, and I think it's really useful. I think it's, it's not heavy on anatomy, it's just a fun, um, intuitive approach for sketching people that I think is just a nice change of pace, really. Because uh, a lot of people have been commenting to me how they are looking for a method that will allow them to enjoy sketching people without learning a lot of anatomical uh, knowledge and learning too much about the human body, which can be hard, I, I understand. Uh, so here we go. These are the legs. This one is foreshortened. It's moving towards us. Let me zoom in a bit. So as I mentioned, this leg is foreshortened. You can see here it's going a little towards us which makes it look shorter, which is why they end the same spot. But here you can see the entire length of the foot. Um, now, as for the background, it's gonna be fairly simple. There's this line of light and shadow here. It's just a classic East Village kind of street. I'm gonna improvise probably the shadows, but the only thing I do care about is their cast shadow. So this, I don't wanna improvise. I wanna get it accurately. So here we go. And now we can paint this. So. The whole thing with the two steps watercolor painting method is the first wash is a very simplistic one, very light, and then the second one really establishes the forms and the light and shadow. So let's do it. Now, if I see a bit of warmth in the face, I'm gonna put a bit of warm color. So a bit of red, uh, a bit of yellow, and that's the first wash. Notice how light it's gonna be. I don't even care if it's super accurate or not. I'm just putting it in there. Let's put a bit of pyrrole scarlet just for the heck of it. Uh, let me move it a bit so you can see, but it's really not that big of a deal. So here is a bit of, uh, sorry, a bit of um, pyrrole scarlet in the, in the face. Because it's uh, warm, I think of nothing but that really at this stage. Now on to the shirt. The shirt is also surprisingly quite uh, warm because of the sunlight. So I'm actually gonna go with a yellow, don't kill me. <laughs> but I'm just gonna go with the yellow as the under layer. You know what, let's neutralize it just a bit. So I put a bit of the whatever I had on the palette to neutralize it and notice how when you use a lot of water, you don't have to be in a hurry all the time because everything flows. I can, you see how much this pool moves, uh, which is something that everyone is making. It's a consistent mistake everyone's making. And notice also how this is very different from my previous videos that do one layer a la prima and leave a lot of white highlights. This time it's a no-go. We're gonna put a first wash, two steps. First wash, second wash. So here's the hand, here's another hand. I'm not gonna leave any white highlights even though sometimes I would die to do that. But really here, it's, it's, that's not our aim, okay? Maybe just for the water bottle, you know, who cares? I'm gonna put 
a bit of a highlight on the water bottle. Here we go. Now, uh, as for the pants, now the pants are darker, so we do have to get it a little darker because what we're doing is essentially painting the highlights, okay? So the pants themselves, aside from the really dark shadows, are a little darker. So I'm gonna mix a darker mix, okay? And that's the main point. That's actually what, I, it's a good thing I finally uh, arrived at that conclusion. That's what I wanted to say. We are in fact painting what's gonna be the highlights real soon, okay? So you wanna make sure that you get those in the right spot. Here it is, just dark for the pants. Just dark, it's all one big piece. Now here we have a good opportunity to just move along and I'm not do even doing wet and wet, okay? I'm not doing wet and wet because what I want to show you is really a simplistic approach of doing two glazes, okay? So here's, so, so I'm just doing that, okay? I'm not doing wet and wet. I could, I could do a lot of good things here. I'm not doing them. Now here's a magic opportunity to connect these two people. So I'm going to connect it to this guy's feet, but now let's work fast on the top part and connect, okay? So a bit of red or warmth once again for the face. It's quite warm. I'll make it a little less warm than the previous guy because, I don't know, for variety's sake, here we go. Now I'm gonna get a bit of uh, blue. It's gonna be light blue, maybe a bit of this, uh, I forgot what it is, cobalt blue, I think. And then just connect. Now this guy's shirt is a little more on the cool side, so I'm gonna use this cool blue for its entirety, okay? I'm not using yellow like I did here. That's how I see it. You know, everyone has a bit of a different vision for the what they see in front of them. Feel free to change it based on yours. That's the whole idea here. The hands are gonna be, once again, a little warmer color because of the skin tone. And I'm gonna have to come back with a bit of a stronger paint to negate what's previously there. And here's a hand, here's another hand. Now off to the pens. The pens are fairly light, so let's mix this semi-neutral but warm mix. Connect it, so it's nice. It's kind of the opposite uh, way around, as you can see here. A bit more yellow into this, going all the way to the bottom, all the way to the bottom. I'm, I barely even care if I'm accurate with the drawing, really, because it's such a wet wash, and the the, the background doesn't really mean a lot here. So I'm connecting it here. The the lay, the foot and the shoe are darker, so let me darken these up. Uh, let's add this cast shadow here connect this shadow here, this connects to one shape, and this slag casts uh, this shape that goes back through here, okay? And we're done with the first wash. We're gonna let this dry and then come back and add the shadows. What I could do at this stage, I could have done it before too, is to merge them with the environment. And you know, I've shown you work by Udes Correa, he does that kind of thing. So I could just open it up. Like, let me show you what I mean. I could just take a bit of that paint and add it to the environment just to open it up, make it flow a bit. That's possible too, I just didn't think of doing it in that particular example, but here we go. We merged some of the figure with the environment, okay? Now let's let it dry and come back. And now on to the next stage, and I'm just gonna do it the same way I showed you in the past, quite loose, free, and immediate, okay? But this is the stage where if you wanna put in more effort into getting this to look accurate, then feel free to, okay, that's the time. So I'm gonna put in the hair. I will, you know what, depending on my mood, I may tr end up trying to get this a little more accurate, I don't know. Too much uh, paint on the brush. Actually, let me switch it up. This brush is way too thirsty and then you can't control anything in these sizes. Uh, it's a bit too small for that kind of brush. So uh, here we go here and I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm always listing in the recent videos, uh, the material is down uh, in the description box. So uh, be sure to check that out. Um, you know what, let me zoom in a bit so you can see the details here better. So now as for the shirt, now the shadows on it are quite black actually. So let's just go for a very dark color. Um, we have the uh, collar here, so I'm gonna get the shadow on the collar like that and then we're gonna get a very gentle shadow under the collar Which will turn it into a collar you see so that hopefully makes sense uh, There's actually the shadow moves all the way to the right like this My Mac got locked as it likes to do so I don't see the reference photo here we go uh, This entire thing is empty of shadow. So let's work on that. We have a shadow coming through here 
Um, let me move this a bit to the right. Here we go. Um, and then all of these shadows that come down into the, you know, the sleeve around the armpit, you'll always find plenty of shadows. And I'm trying to keep it simple, but have all of the necessary details. We have the stitching line here. Let's turn this into a little more blue. Then we have this kind of a thing with a sharp edge at the bottom. We have another shadow coming through here, uh, and then through here, and then back into here. Now here's where you have to make it all work together, so some of the shadows meet on the left section. Now he has a belt, this shadow moves to the right, and you see it's just, we had one stage in which we did the basics, uh, the, the, you know, the color for the highlights, actually. And then the next one is where we're doing the shadows. And that's pretty much it. That's the watercolor process in a nutshell if you really want to simplify it. Now let me grab some red here for the skin tone. Neutralize it just a bit and have the shadow come through here. And here you have to really interpret what you see. We have this the thumb fatty area. Then this goes around. Then we have another shadow here under the finger and then another one. So this makes sense, hopefully. Now on the other side, you get this shadowy shape on the right. And then let's connect it once again to the skin tone shape and uh, shadow, more skin tone. Um, let me get rid of some of the color and here we go. A bit more red, like so, the elbow leaving a bit of room for a highlight, then we have the uh, hand holding the bottle, like so. Now let's put in a bit of pure blue. There we go. I don't know why. Probably should have went a little lighter here, uh, but that's fine. Let's go back with a bit of water. I don't know, I thought it would do something else. Uh, that sometimes happens. Let me just go back with pure water on it, see what happens. There we go. Let it move. Whatever happens, happens. I don't care. Next up, pants. Let's continue this shadow. I want these to be interesting. I hope you enjoy seeing this because I'm basically rendering the shapes I see. But if something's boring, let me know. Uh, so I'll improve for the next videos. But here it is, the pants. There's He has something in his back pocket. So here we go, like this. There's an actual abrupt change here. And then this connects to all of the shadows here. There's a thin line of stitching. This connects to all of these small shapes. Then we have a bunch of highlights within the shadow, like so. But this entire right side is in the shadow, going like this. So you see how I'm simplifying, but I'm still quite accurate. Um, I'm still rendering it pretty accurately, I would say. And then behind the knee, we will always find all of these small creases and folds and then the bottom part of the pants. Let's continue with this stage. There is a cast shadow by the hand going like this, going like that, going back here. Now if your drawing was accurate, um, you will get a decent result here if you know how to render things accurately. Um, if your drawing is inaccurate, like mine is here by the way, it's not as accurate because I was really uh, speeding up the process here. Um, you may get a result that's a bit skewed, but that's fine. Now let me blend just here uh, these areas because sometimes the painting will benefit from some areas that are blended and some areas that are sharp a variety of edges that's always a good idea and then we have the uh, shoe shoe here as well and we're done with this figure let's move on to the next one same thing let's go with a bit more yellow this time I don't know why and then put in this kind of shadow on the right then I'm gonna switch to a bit of a red for the uh, back of the neck and for the ear here. There we go. And back to blue. Let's mix the cobalt and phthalo and get something in the middle. Here we have this kind of a thing. A bunch of these lines, the sleeve, there's a shadow here, goes around here, goes around here. Here it is, like so. This should be very fun. Um, if you're not enjoying this kind of a thing, um, you may be putting too much pressure on yourself to get a perfect result or to get some kind of a result. You know, it doesn't even have to be perfect, but sometimes we have a vision and we're very strict with ourselves. 
that it has to match that vision. And it doesn't. The reality is it doesn't. You have the freedom to change your plan, change things around, go with a bit of paint and just kind of go like this and um, kind of, you know, mess things up on purpose. Go with a huge bunch of water and just go at it like this, you know, just spray some water, see what happens, merge things around, you know, feel free to change up your plan. I didn't plan on doing this weird thing. I did it now. Um, I'm going to take a big chunk of red paint and just spray it all over. You know what? I don't care. Whatever happens, happens. You have to get to that um, way of loosening up. Okay, you have to be able to do that. Now back to the, to the actual figures here. So we'll connect it here. This shadow goes all the way to the bottom like this. This shirt goes around like that. Now the pants are fairly light. The shadow over there is very weak. So it's kind of a weak yellow, muted yellow. So I'll go for what I have here try to keep the balance and not have it be too dark, but I do want it to show the highlight. So I want it to be dark enough to show that this area, for example, is in the light. So let's see how it goes. Let's just give it a try. So here's the yellow with the crease here, shadow coming from here, shadow on this side of the leg, this entire part is in the shadow. And then this part that's, that I told you is foreshortened towards us has a major spot of light on it. Here we go with these shadows, then we're going to put in a shadow here, a shadow there, and it looks to me like we're pretty much done. I just forgot the hand here. So let's add that in like this. Here we go. Uh, let's add, let's do some wet and wet. We haven't done any of that here. So I'm going to do a bit of the fold and creases here in wet and wet. This area is the darkest, so let's go for that. And aside from that, I don't think it needs too much. Now what I wanna do is let this dry and then add the shadows in the background, because right now we have a lot of wetness here. I don't wanna do it now, it's just gonna create something weird, okay? So let's let it dry for a couple of seconds, come back. This actually I love. <laughs> okay, so I let it dry for a bit, but not fully, because believe it or not, in this example, you don't need full dry. And actually, if some of the edges are going to be a little darker, we're gonna we're gonna deal with it. We're gonna uh, just accept it. So I'm gonna, uh, if they're gonna be uh, blended, you know. So I'm gonna add a shadow here that I just see. I look at the reference photo, I see a shadow, I put it in. Okay, it's very simple, don't overcomplicate it. Here we go, shadow, 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 shadow. It goes like that. It has another shadow, it kind of goes like this. Now the one thing, the one risk you have when doing this is going too dark and therefore ruining the sense of light. Because right now we have something beautiful. We have a great balance of, um, I would say, lights and darks. So you want to preserve that to some extent. Now this dude on the left, everything he wears is dark anyway. So I'm just gonna do this kind of a lazy thing here, like this. But the main part, the main thing that I wanted to get in here is this. There's this shadow, this continuation of this shadow is here. And when I get that, in accurately and this shadow as well you'll get a nice little separation between his legs that makes sense um, between this, this the pants because now you can actually see the light and shadow now I went a little too light on the shadow here but I'm gonna keep it that way I love it strong contrast here weaker contrast here okay uh, there's another kind of shadow going all across let's edit in like this like this like this this part is shadowed, I completely forgot to even get to here because I was having so much fun. His soul is in the light, so here we go, shoe soul I mean, not his actual soul. And I think with that, we're done. I don't know what you think, I like it. I think it looks good and I'm gonna sign it right now, right this second. I love this kind of work that helps me let loose. And it's funny because right now I'm actually going through a time period where I wanna get more realistic and more accurate with my work but I do feel like once in a while I have to do this kind of a thing just to loosen up. Even my uh, signature here is <laughs> very loose and, I don't know, wonky. But in any case, here we go, got him. I hope you enjoyed uh, this little demonstration. Now we can wrap it up. So this is it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the process. Here it is, uh, up close, the finished result. Uh, and again, you saw me improvising so many times and just thinking, okay, here I want, oh, let's try this thing out. What will happen if we just put in this 
bunch of paint and my main emphasis here I want to get you to not worry as much about the result about uh, what the painting looks like I want you to enjoy the process now with that I also mentioned near the end of the video I am making a slight switch I feel like a lot of my visual language is a bit tacky and gimmicky and I want to make a change and focus a little more on rendering things realistically being able to do that and from that with uh, withdrawing my um, impression so that I have the ability to even when I do impressionistic work nail it a little more realistically okay I hope that makes sense I'm just going through these stages and I look at all of the impressionistic watercolor paintings that go on today and a lot of them look similar to me because a lot of them you learn from one artist you just take the way he paints people people's heads are red for example people's heads are orange and you just kind of steal that idea and then it gets stuck in your head I want to have the the freedom to do it my way so you're gonna see perhaps some change in the content I'm not sure but in any case I want to thank you so much and remind you that my uh, how to sketch people book is out first in Kindle version I'm working on the paperback version I hope it's out soon it may be out by the time this video is out Check out the link in the description box below if you want to learn how to sketch people, okay, in pencil, not color. And I'm sorry that I, I'm talking fast, I know. Sorry about that. I want to thank you once again for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you again in the next vid real soon.